Welcome to Woodfield. As usual, this video is designed as an aid to exploration. Log off the computer, pull up this video on your phone, and go for a walk. Each time I'm done talking about a building, I'll throw up a map to get you to the next one. Pause the video and take a stroll. Indeed, feel free to wander off script for a while. I'll still be there when you get to the next site, and there's always another side street to explore. Woodfield was originally laid out in 1840, at which time it was incorporated into the town of London. For a generation, however, it remained largely undeveloped, featuring a handful of country estates. The area's growth really began in the 1870s, with the development of London as a growing financial and industrial centre. As factories spread it up downtown and in London East, the wealthy migrated to the blocks of Queens, Dufferin and Princess east of downtown, a trend accelerated by the establishment of Victoria Park on the western edge of the neighbourhood in 1874. By the 1890s, the area was dominated by tree-lined streets, featuring large, ornate residences. The early 20th century saw the migration of London's wealthy to the north end of the city, leading to the demolition of some of the largest residences and the subdivision of others into apartments. Beginning in the 1970s, however, the area saw the influx of a new generation of residents, attracted by the area's architecture and its proximity to downtown. Today's walk begins at the intersection of Dundas and Maitland streets. The church on the northeast corner of Dundas and Maitland was erected in 1895 as the new home of Dundas Street Methodist Church, a congregation which dated to 1856. The earlier church had been destroyed by fire, arson was suspected, but the congregation resolved to rebuild quickly. They also appear to have resolved to demonstrate the wealth of the congregation, hiring Toronto architect George King to design an elaborate Romanesque structure featuring some of the best brickwork in the city and an eclectic skyline. The congregation was comprised of many of the city's most prominent industrialists, and among its ministers was Reverend E.A. Pearson, father of later Canadian Prime Minister Lester B. Pearson. The church's sanctuary ranks among the most impressive interiors in the city. Walk half a block east on Dundas Street. You're looking for Beale Secondary School on the south side of Dundas Street. The H.B. Beale Technical and Arts School was established in 1916 to serve a growing need for technical and scientific education as industrial machines became more sophisticated in the early 20th century. While the industrial jobs of the 19th century were relatively simple and could be taught to a worker with relatively little prior training, by the turn of the century, modern factories required large numbers of workers trained in engineering and the sciences. Most industrial centers found themselves obliged to establish technical high schools like Beale to supply that training. A century later, Beale has transformed itself into the city's premier arts high school, responding yet again to a changing city. Continue east along Dundas to Bookin House at 566 Dundas Street. Bookin House was originally built in 1875 as a large, if relatively plain, Italianate residence. In 1887, however, the house was purchased by Thomas Escott, a wealthy grocer who added two towers and an ornate central entrance, updating the facade to reflect high Victorian standards of elegance. The apartment building behind Buchan House stands on the site of Woodfield, the residence of Bishop Benjamin Cronin. Benjamin Cronin was a prominent resident of early London, serving as the first permanent Anglican priest in the settlement, and later becoming the first bishop of the newly established Diocese of Huron. Cronin was directly or indirectly responsible for the establishment of over a hundred Anglican parishes in the developing countryside surrounding London. He also grew wealthy, speculating on land development to the east of downtown London, including the property on which he erected his house in 1846, then well out into the countryside. Despite the demolition of the residence, Woodfield ultimately left its name to the neighbourhood which grew up around it. Return west to William Street and walk north a block to the intersection of William and Queens. The church on the southeast corner of William and Queens was erected in 1873 to plans by Toronto architect Henry Langley. Originally known simply as the Memorial Church, the Anglican Church was erected as a memorial to Bishop Benjamin Cronin after his death, with both the land and the building erected on it being donated by Cronin's heirs. The church is an elaborate Gothic structure, reflecting the freer use of the architectural precedents emerging in England at the time. The interior of the church has been converted into a concert hall and is one of the finest spaces in the neighbourhood. The towered residence on the northeast corner of William and Queens was built for Charles Murray, manager of the Federal Bank, in 1878. Designed by local architect George Durand, the house is a nearly pure example of the Italian villa popular at the time. The house's owner proved less stable than the house, 
In 1887, Charles Murray absconded to Omaha, Nebraska, taking with him several hundred thousand dollars embezzled from London banks. Turn left, walking east along Queens Avenue. The row of houses from 562 to 570 Queens Avenue stand on the site of the Labatt Mansion, an elaborate Queen Anne residence erected in 1882 for the brewing magnate John Labatt to plans by George Durant. The residence on the northwest corner of Queens and Adelaide was erected in 1880 as the home of Benjamin Cronin Jr., the son of Bishop Benjamin Cronin and two-term mayor of London, an elaborate Second Empire residence designed by George Durand. The house was spared the fate of the Labatt residence next door by virtue of its conversion into a church in 1930. While three sides of the house have been surrounded by later construction, the west facade, originally fronting onto the house's gardens, survives to the present day. Walk north two blocks along Adelaide Street, then turn left, walking a block east along Princess Avenue to William Street. Look for the towered house at 527 Princess Avenue. The Cooper residence was built in 1900 for photographer Frank Cooper, London's most successful portrait photographer. An impressive residence dominated by its corner tower, the house is the finest on a very successful block. Indeed, as you keep walking east, pay attention to the details on many of the houses. Stop at the intersection of Princess and Maitland. Lord Roberts Public School, on the northeast corner of Princess and Maitland, stands on the site of Bleak House, the 1852 residence of George Macbeth, assistant, confidant, and partial heir of Colonel Thomas Talbot, the administrator responsible for the settlement of the London area. With the growth of the area in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, the need for an elementary school prompted the construction of Lord Roberts, erected in 1916 to plans by Hubert McBride. Continue three blocks west along Princess Avenue to Waterloo Street. If you're interested, continue west to see the impressive row of late Victorian residences on the north side of Princess between Waterloo and City Hall. Otherwise, or when you're finished, turn south on Waterloo. The large school on the west side of Waterloo, between Princess and Dufferin, is Central Secondary School. Established in 1877 as London's first high school, the original structure was a Victorian Gothic building designed by the local architectural firm of Robinson, Tracy and Fairbairn. The new school was considered the pride of the city, providing higher education to both boys and girls, and offering courses in Latin and Greek. Quickly proving inadequate, the structure was repeatedly expanded before being destroyed in a fire in 1920. The present collegiate Gothic structure was finished in 1922. Head south on Waterloo Street. Notice as you go the two excellent Romanesque double houses across the street from Central Secondary at 512 to 518 Waterloo Street. Stop at the intersection of Dufferin and Waterloo. The modest cottage on the southwest corner of Dufferin and Waterloo was erected for one of London's wealthiest residents, Nathaniel Reed, in 1876. Nathaniel Reed was a successful importer of fine china and the operator of Reed's Crystal Hall. Later in his life, he expanded into the manufacture of china, establishing a large facility in London. His relatively modest home, designed by Watson and Constantine, was erected late in his life, and its small size, and especially its limitation to a single story, seemed to have been a result of his confinement to a wheelchair. The large house, immediately south of the Reed residence, was erected in 1910 for Robert D. MacDonald to plans by the local architectural firm of Moore, Henry, and Monroe. A large classical portico grafted onto an otherwise late Queen Anne residence, the combination is remarkably successful. MacDonald made his fortune in the cigar business. In the early decades of the 20th century, London was the largest centre of cigar manufacturing in Ontario, with a score of companies operating by 1910. Continue south on Waterloo Street to the intersection of Waterloo and Queens. The church on the northeast corner of Waterloo and Queens was erected as St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church, despite the efforts of William Proudfoot to establish a unified Presbyterian congregation in the 1830s. The area's Scottish residents remained deeply divided over questions of church policy, and by the 1840s three separate Presbyterian churches had been established within four blocks of each other. All three prospered with the growing city, and by 1868, St. Andrews had grown large enough to engage William Robinson to design a new, larger church for the congregation. St. Andrews merged with the congregation of First Presbyterian in 1938, finally creating the unified Presbyterian congregation William Proudfoot had attempted to establish a century earlier. This concludes our Woodfield Walk. From here you could return to the start of the walk by heading two blocks east on Queen and one block south on Maitland. Ultimately, 
you could wander north to Dufferin, where Victoria Park awaits you to the west, and a number of excellent Victorian residences lie to the east. <laughs>